Indiana lawmakers are back to work. The 2018 legislative session kicked off this week. There's no single issue that's expected to dominate the session, but there are a number of contentious topics that have already come up. State House reporter Brandon Smith joins us. Brandon, I know you're busy. Let's start with the Department of Child Services. In her resignation letter last month, former DCS Director Mary Beth Bonaventura warned of dire consequences if the department doesn't make major changes. This prompted Governor Eric Holcomb to have an independent consultant examine the agency. Now, House Speaker Brian Bosma says the issue needs addressed. We literally have more than double the children in our, in our child welfare system using the same definition than Ohio and Illinois combined. We spend more money on child welfare than Ohio and Illinois combined. So, Brandon, there seems to be a lot of political will here. What do you see happening with DCS this session? Honestly, not very much. Uh, Republican leaders in the House and Senate say they want to let the expert consultants do their work and that they don't think the process would be well served by legislative hearings and investigations. Now, GOP leaders have promised to an, a full review of the consultants' report once it's finished, but that isn't likely until after session is over. And what about cold beer sales? Certainly not a new issue, but one that seemed to come to head during last year's session because of a loophole Rickers found that allowed it to sell cold beer. And State Senator Philip Boots has already introduced a bill to allow the sale of cold beer at grocery and convenience stores. So do you get the sense any of these bills will advance or what hurdles might they face? Well, cold beer expansion faces, frankly, an uphill battle. There is consensus growing around legalized Sunday alcohol sales. That was the big recommendation that came out of the Summer Study Commission on this. But cold beer expansion th faces a lot more opposition, particularly some people who feel like expanding that into grocery stores and convenience stores would increase overconsumption, increase underage drinking. So at this point, I'd call it a long shot. Let's talk about the opioid epidemic. The legislature passed several measures last year aimed at addressing the problem. Still, it got worse. House Minority Leader Terry Gooden is from Austin, Indiana, one of the places hardest hit by the epidemic. For those who have seen their communities destroyed by drugs, a battle I've witnessed firsthand, I will say we will do everything in our power to make sure officials have the tools they need to fight this disaster. So, Brandon, with support from Governor Holcomb and legislators, what are they looking at doing to stem the tide of opioids in the state? Well, when House Republicans unveiled their caucus's agenda this week, it included a measure that will help create nine new drug treatment centers around the state. That followed Governor Eric Holcomb's promise that no Hoosier should have to drive more than an hour to one of these centers. So that's the nine new centers. They will also push, le push legislation that will streamline licensing for mental health and addiction treatment professionals. Cannabidiol has also been a hot button issue in the state this year. One state senator has already filed a bill that would make CBD available to more Hoosiers. Representative Jim Lucas is on a crusade to legalize the substance. And the more I learned about medical cannabis, the more I kept asking myself, why isn't Indiana doing this? Why aren't we one of the 29 states that don't criminalize their citizens? for seeking a better quality of life. So what's legal under the current CBD law varies depending on who you ask. Brandon, is there a sense among lawmakers that they need to clarify the law or just make CBD available to everyone? Well, I think there's a lot more willingness to clarify the CBD law, but we heard something new from House Speaker Brian Bosma this week, which is that he's starting to think that CBD should be available to everyone as long as it doesn't contain any THC, which was the primary psychoactive ingredient in cannabis. All right. Thank you very much, Brandon. Thank you, Joe. Before we shift gears, another House Democrat has decided not to seek re-election. Linda Lawson has represented Hammond for 20 years. She's the number two ranking House Democrat. She says the legislature has become toxic with Republicans holding large majorities. Lawson's decision comes, up, comes after Representative Scott Peloth of Michigan City stepped down as House Minority Leader in November.